Welcome back to Weekend Life with me, Roman Travis and for Trudy Nelson this long, long weekend. I hope it's going well for you. Do drive carefully. It looks like things are brightening up in some parts of the country, but take extra care, won't you? You can text me anytime you like. I'm here until 2 on 3920. EQ and IQ, what's the difference? Come on. I struggle sometimes. That could explain a lot, couldn't it? To know the differences between the two. Over the past two decades, there's been a growing amount of evidence that emotional intelligence, EQ, may just be as important, if not more so, than IQ. IQ is about what you know and how you apply that knowledge. EQ is about a way of being that helps you connect with other people. And I know that because I just read it. Um, yeah. It is quite confusing, but joining me now is a man who can clarify it all for us, Harold Hillman. Harold, hello, how are you? Well, man, I'm fine, thank you. Now, you're a leadership coach and you're from the Sigmoid Curve Consulting Group. That's right. Tell me, in a nutshell, more definitively, the difference between EQ and IQ. Well, I, with IQ, we are generally focused on um, the what in terms of specific knowledge. It's considered a general aptitude. So it's about what you know and more importantly, how you apply that. And IQ is considered to be relatively stable across life and that if you map um, the general population um, across IQ, most of us fall within average range and then there are f a few people who are considered gifted, there are a few people who might be considered intellectually challenged. That tends to stay stable across one's lifetime. EQ is different. Roman, EQ is, is really more about the how mm. and that sense of more of a focus on the relational aspects of your leadership as opposed to the task and the process. So if, uh, EQ, you can absolutely lift. You can raise it um, if it's important to you and, um, and if you begin to appreciate the benefits associated with connecting with people around um, something a bit deeper than just a paycheck. Hmm. Does EQ, having a higher level of EQ, make you weak? It does not. I don't think that it does. It, so it's not to be confused with being compromising or that word nice. There is a focus on the, um, the relational side of leadership. So it does mean that you do see people more as a whole person. We forget sometimes with, that when our employees come to work, they are whole people. They have lives beyond the workplace. And for someone who's just gone through a major ordeal, a death in the family, a sick kid, a, you know, a particularly trying scenario, it does help sometimes to sit down and have a conversation with them about how it's going, not to fix the problem as much as it is to show empathy and to show that, you know, you really there, that you appreciate that there's a whole person that comes with um, uh, you know, this employee walking through the door every day, it does make a difference in terms of their willingness to go the extra mile for you. Yeah, I guess it does. When did EQ become more and more important in business? About two decades ago, there was a, a, a book uh, a, by an author called Daniel Goldman, and Daniel Goldman wrote this book, in, uh, Emotional Intelligence. And it was, it, again, uh, roughly two decades ago, and in this book, Daniel Goldman predicted that over the next two decades, which are certainly playing themselves out now, um, with the increased cycles of change, just change happening more often, more frenetically in organizations, there's more anxiety, there's more vulnerability, and that leaders weren't going to be able to hide behind process mm -hmm. and, you know, having carefully scripted conversations with people that leaders were going to have to be more real and more authentic in terms of being able to stay connected with people as they take them through change. And, and uh, sure enough, the, certainly the empirical evidence that sits under emotional intelligence is that it has become far more important, particularly with senior leaders in the organization, focused more on the how as opposed to the what. Yeah, I guess if you want to avoid stress these days, just don't go to work. Change is the one thing that is consistent in any job. Tell me, when you're looking at a CV, if I was writing a CV or even reading someone else's, how do you measure EQ when a CV is all about experience and IQ? Yeah, it is. It's, it's a bit more difficult, um, certainly from a CV, where we are more focused on sort of the specific accountabilities that we w were able to achieve in a row. So it comes more across as the what. 
But I think it is important in your CV to convey how, um, the leadership component of your role. The management side of it is often about the task. But leading teams through change, particularly transformational change, um, uh, being able to, in terms of, of mentoring or coaching, coaching, for example, is, is, is a term now that we use in leadership which does emphasize more EQ as opposed to managing, which is more hands-on and task-focused. And so you can convey on your CV that, in fact, you do understand the intricacies involved in taking people, leading people through change, keeping people engaged um, through change, which really requires strong um, EQ, and helping people in stretch, you know, in terms Mm -hmm. of coaching or mentoring them. Mm. I've met some very, very intelligent people in my life, but they have absolutely no common sense, um, <laughs> which, which is quite bizarre. But can you give some examples of the contrast between high and low EQ? Well, a, a few years ago, I was working with a very tall, very big guy who's like six foot four and, um, you know, considerable weight. And when he got angry, he would swell up. And that would be very, very, very intimidating for the team. And so just something like that. I use that as an example of, of someone who would learn around their emotional intelligence, perhaps to sit down or to pull back a little bit more in relation to keeping the team connected with us. So self, EQ, the self-awareness is a big, huge component of it. If you're trying to lift your EQ, you want strong self-awareness and that's one of those things that you just have to be a bit more mindful um, around how it is that you can keep people i use the word connected with you particularly when you're trying to influence them and are there some things that you can do differently so i gave that as an example An- another example would be just taking the time very often to um, ask people a bit more about circumstances that may be pushing in on their ability um, to deliver, that would be um, an example, or, or um, sharing a bit more of yourself. Sometimes as managers or leaders, we don't talk to people about struggles that we've had. One of the ways that you can inspire a person who may be struggling with something, particularly if they are a little anxious and talking to you about it, is to tell a real personal story about a time when you were able to push through something as opposed to sitting there coming across as the perfect leader who can't empathize with you know struggles and challenge and so sometimes it's just stepping outside that need to be this perfect person and making yourself a bit more authentic and real. Harold I've got to go this is just fascinating stuff and I really appreciate you joining us on Weekend Live.